Howdy, I'm Sam Feifel with the Spar Point Group, and I'm here with Jeff Jacobs from Leica. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing great. So, uh, there's been a lot of buzz about a new scanner that you guys are debuting at the show. Uh, what's new and different about it, and you know, why is it a step forward? Okay, thanks for asking, Sam. I think, uh, I think uh, one of the buzz elements is the instrument itself. The second one is the fact that it's from Leica, right? And because we're because of our leadership position in the industry. Anytime one of the major vendors comes out with something new, it's a, it's a buzz. So uh, we have had a lot of people come by and said, "Oh, what's that?" Or you know, we hear you have a new scanner. Uh, the new scanner we have is called the HDS 7000. It's the latest version of our phase-based scanner offering. So in our case, we offer both time of flight and phase-based scanners. Uh, the, the HDS 7000 is this uh, instrument right here. And uh, when customers walk up, they've got uh, sort of two reactions. One is the visual one, because there are some features on it that are noticeably visible to our existing users, or people that have been looking at scanners for a while. And then there's uh, another part of it that's not so visible. Okay, On the visible side, the major changes that a user will see is in the user interface. Mm -hmm. So what I have here is the, the HDS uh, 7000. You see it's a big, bright screen. Yep. And it's got graphical elements on it got icons on it. If I were to start poking around in it, what you'd see is uh, is a fair bit of uh, very friendly interface that also has some surveying type features in it. Mm -hmm. The previous version is the one just over here to the side of it. Yep. That's the HDS 6200. And if you take a close look at that interface, you'll see that, that the backlit screen on that has just got alpha numeric text sure. characters, right? And then a few buttons on it. So this one has uh, more, it's, it's a little friendlier. It, ha it gives the user more controls, friendlier controls, and it lets them do more things with the scanner than that they were able to do before. Uh, and, and in fact, the one I have on the far left here, this is our ScanStation C10. It's sort of our most popular scanner, if you mm -hmm. would. And uh, that one has had a uh, graphical user interface on the instrument. It's very oriented towards surveyors. And the popularity of that interface is one of the things that drove the development of sure. this interface on this instrument. So now that we have both instruments that have that kind of interface. Another element that's a visual one that people react to very strongly is, is I can take this device here, and what I've done is I've pulled out a USB stick. Hey, there okay. you go. So you can either store data, uh, you can store it on the USB stick, remove it. And in fact, if you wanted to, you could put the same USB stick I know I'm uh, moving out of the camera's view here, but I could put it in the, in the same instrument. I might have to turn it. I have to flip it around. Flip there. it around, there put it go. in the right way, just like the problem <laughs> I have on my computer. Uh, but you see that same USB stick, and you could put it in, e in either instrument. Uh, that capability in the C10 will be available in June. Right. Okay. Uh, the port is there, but can't use it uh, until until June for that purpose. Gotcha. Uh, now the other part that you can't see mm -hmm. is uh, this instrument has quite a bit longer range than the prior version of the face-based scan. Sure. There's been the fundamental change in the... How much is in, quite a bit? All right, so the previous, so this one now will pick up returns from a vertical surface beyond 100 meters, okay? Previously, from a practical standpoint, the previous generation we pick up returns out to about 60 meters or so. So that's a pretty okay. significant increase. It's yeah. a very significant in increase in, as far as when you can get returns. From a practical standpoint, users will use phase-based scanners a little shorter range sure. than when you can actually get returns. The same thing even with time of flight scanners. So their mm -hmm. practical useful range is a little less than that. Uh, but it's a significant increase in the range at which you can get returns. So those are the those are the biggest differences. There are some other subtle differences, a little smaller, lighter, et cetera. But sure. those are the big. That's the ones that cut the big buzz going. Right. And, right. You know, hardware is great, but one of the big things that have been talked about at the show is the software. Like, okay, we got the data. Now we got to do some stuff with it. Uh, you know, obviously you're making advances with your software all the time. What's sort of new and different on the software end for Leica right now? Right. That, that's a good point. I've sat in some of those same sessions where. The focus really switched. I mean, said this, you know, the scanners are really good. They're easy to use. They're fast. Where we get, where we still have a ways to go is in the office, right? And sure. as a vendor, we also provide software that not only registers the point clouds together, but we also provide solutions that let customers get to their final deliverables. Yep. Right. And so, and from our standpoint, that's a big deal because a lot of times customers would prefer to deal with one large solution. Uh, uh, and a vendor that provides those. 
So we had two, uh, two things that we showed at, the, uh, at SPAR this year. Mm -hmm. Uh, one is a, a, a software that we use. It's for topographic mapping. Okay. Okay. So for civil, structural, uh, uh, civil survey projects, uh, a lot of people want to get topographic site maps, and whatsoever. And scanning has always been a little bit problematic there because of the angle of incidents. When you right. start hitting ground, you pick up a lot of stuff that you don't necessarily want. Uh, vegetation. Uh, you know, there you know, obviously there's trees out there. There's other things. Uh, it's not like if you do the side of a building, you get everything that you want. Exactly when you're scanning right. ground and you want to get the ground, there's a lot of stuff that gets in the way. So one of the challenges has always been, well, how do you remove the stuff that you don't want, right? right. And uh, we have a, an application called Cyclone 2 Topo 2.0. There's a lot of twos in there. And, uh, and that application has some new algorithms in it that automatically remove anything except what's on the ground, okay? does it and retains very sharp surfaces, so curb edges, mm -hmm. which is you do want to retain, and you want to retain them as sharp edges. Uh, and then it also has a, a tools to not only remove the points that you don't like, but convert it into a mesh that is a minimum number of triangles, yet preserves the geometry, so that when you finally export it into an application like Civil 3D or whatever, uh, the user is ready to go. Our estimates is that it, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's literally for that task would be as much of a 90% time reduction in the office. That's so a big when, deal. If you yeah. talk about what we heard in the, you know, during the conference, that's a big deal. Sure. Uh, the other introduction on the software side has been uh, in our main Cyclone, Cyclone 7.2 model. I mean, it's going to show up in other modules as well, but it's our workhorse. And there, uh, when people are using that kind of a tool, they're often used, they can often be working with very, very large data sets, like literally half a billion points sure. over here, those kind of numbers thrown out, hundreds of scans. And it's and one of the problems that the industry has, if you're sitting at your desk and you're trying to work with files that are that large, there are challenges when you move the image to view it in 3D. Locks up. It kind of either can lock up or it gets a little blocky in its movement. And 7.2, which is not released yet, we did a preview, it'll be released, uh, it's released as planned for second quarter, I'll say. Mm -hmm. uh, that one has a dramatically improved performance for that kind of a task. So then, now when you move it, you literally see no lag. And, and that, again, increases office efficiency. Yeah. And that's going to increase their desire to actually want to use it, obviously, because yeah. it's less frustrating. Yep, and it also, what it will, a lot of these things wind up driving Oh, now I can do more scans, right. and now I can, you know, I can, or I can scan more densely, right? Because before they would have backed off yeah. from that. So it's going to continue to drive that demand. Okay. Uh, so that that, and we also make some good improvements on the cyclone registration side to speed the process and also give users more control on uh, finding little problems. Because you've also heard that that's not trouble free. Uh, exactly right. That task, yeah. So that's what we've had new at the show. Pro reaction's been very positive, Great. very well attended show, and we've, uh, we've it's been. Uh, a very, very positive experience for us here being at SPAR 2011. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate okay. thank it. Thank you, Sam. And uh, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time.